Welcome to Cleveland, Ohio's Millionaire's Row, a four-mile stretch of our grand Euclid Avenue made up of some 250 mansions, one more grand than the next. The biggest mansions were between 20th and 40th Street. Such names as Rockefeller, Mather, Stone, and Drury all occupied grand, grand mansions. Mark Twain called Euclid Avenue the grandest, most beautiful street in all the world. He actually spent time on Euclid Avenue living with a family called Severance. Let us look at some particular mansions, those that I found most interesting. The first was built by Sam and Flora Stone Mather. They were unique in that they were neighbors on Euclid Avenue and they eventually fell in love and married. They initially moved in with their father-in-law, Amistus Stone, who had a beautiful mansion on Euclid Avenue. This was not unusual for newlyweds to move in with their parents. But eventually, Flora Stone and Sam Mather wanted their own mansion. They hired a famous architect, Charles Schweinforth, to build it for them in the year 1910. This was the most expensive mansion on the avenue, costing some $3 million. Flora Stone and Sam spent much time developing their mansion, but previously to building, they wanted Schweinforth to build their church. This church became Trinity Cathedral on Euclid Avenue about East 22nd Street. From there, Schweinforth drew up the plans for the mansion. Sadly, Flora Stone died of breast cancer in 1910, just previously to moving in. The mansion uh, had over 50 rooms and beautiful gardens and a squash court in the backyard. Our second mansion uh, was built by one Charles Brush. Built in 1884 on Euclid and East 37th Street on the north side of the street. I think one might find of interest that the interior was completely designed by Louis Tiffany. At the foot of the staircase, Brush had a grand organ put in which extended to the third floor ballroom and many an evening he would pound that organ and sent eerie vibrations throughout the entire house. Charles Brush was the first to invent the arc light. This was used on Cleveland's public square to illuminate the square in 1879. Later, Charles Brush combined with Thomas Edison to form the General Electric Company. Brush was the first mansion to be electrified on the avenue and this was done with the world's largest windmill which was in Brush's backyard. The basement was filled with storage batteries. The windmill uh, charged the batteries and gave Brush this wonderful electrified home. The Brush Mansion was eventually torn down in 1929. Our next mansion was built by Sylvester Everett. This again was one of the bigger mansions. Our architect, Charles Schweinforth, was again the architect. The mansion itself was over 30,000 square feet, if one can imagine. It had 35 rooms. 12 bathrooms. One wonders how you can use all those bathrooms. And 30 fireplaces. I would imagine when all those fireplaces were burning, it was like a forest fire. All used every night. Each room had its own decor, and gold leaf was used on the walls in many of the rooms. The Everett Mansion had a special room for visiting presidents of the United States. It was made out of solid black ivory. Such presidents as Grant, Hayes, McKinley, and Taft all spent time in the Everett Mansion. Other names of significance, Andrew Carnegie and J.P. Morgan. This mansion stood for over 55 years, one of the oldest to survive, and was eventually torn down in 1938. The last mansion we're going to talk about was not the grandest by far, but it had other significance, and this was the Carlin House. Built on Euclid, set way back from the street, it had a wonderful front yard. It was built in 1911, and that was significant for it was the last mansion built on Cleveland's Euclid Avenue. The deep yard allowed for gorgeous landscaping, and Carlin's are significant because Anthony Carlin's son John held the last official party saying adieu to Euclid Avenue. This was a black tie affair, over 100 guests wined and dined on the second floor ballroom, and at the stroke of midnight, they all toasted the end of Cleveland's Euclid Avenue Millionaire's Row. 
the Carlins eventually moved to a suburb called Cleveland Heights. It was a sad ending to the row that lasted less than four generations. Going from the grandest avenue in the world, this residential neighborhood turned completely commercial. People sought out a wonderful commercial address on the avenue, and this spelled doom for all the mansions. As commercial pushed up the avenue, the houses were pushed out. This caused the avenue to change from a residential to a commercial situation. The relatives who inherited the mansions could no longer afford the upkeep. They further could not afford the high commercial taxes, and therefore they vacated them or tore them down. What a sad ending. As a commercial avenue today, it really tests one's imagination to see that our Euclid Avenue, Millionaire's Row, Cleveland, Ohio, was at one time the grandest, most beautiful avenue in all the world.